Yeah, I'm fine. you know, to curtail uh, air pollution in Nigeria, especially in rural communities, uh, would be to include uh, the implementation and upscaling of green projects, you know, with, uh, with uh, relevant partnerships, you know, for transmission to low carbon energy sources, such as uh, renewable energy, you know, LPG and energy sufficiency. And we started the clean uh, cooking stove which we want to upscale on a broader scale, you know, to improve uh, the impacts, you know, towards uh, responding to pollution, particularly in communities in Nigeria, you know. So we did this through the Alliance for Clean Cookstoves Initiative to effectively change the mindset of the average Nigerian about firewood and introduce them to cleaner options of uh, cooking you know, with the goal to ensure a safe, uh, affordable, sustainable, clean energy access for all our rural uh, poor. Then I know you were going to ask me about the, why we have not been able to contain the gas flaring menace in the Niger Delta. I'd like to say that efforts are still ongoing with coordination of relevant stakeholders and key players, you know, to enforce, uh, Compliance. We also have the Interministerial Committee on Climate Change with line ministries like the Ministry of Power, Petroleum Resources. So this is an ongoing uh, task. The committee will be meeting to uh, move forward on the implementation of the gas flaring uh, issue. Then also we've had collaborations with the Ministry of Power, you know, for us to ensure progress of the low carbon electrification scheme. You know, we have the collaborations uh, that we did through the green bond that supports the energy projects. Then we have the GIZ, the National Energy Support uh, Project, and I'm sure Sally Jo will talk uh, more on this. I would leave off my closing remarks when I hear from everyone else, then uh, the questions that would come. So I will now give you a closing on what uh, the Ministry of Environment is doing for a clean, to ensure a clean recovery, you know, and for clean recovery, it ties into clean energy. The two are intertwined. Thank you very much. That's a bit I would give for now. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Mm -hmm. um, you kept the mm -hmm. time, we really appreciate that. Um, and, mm. and some of those questions that you, you answered in brief, uh, mm. we'll probably un unpack them a little more uh, okay. during the course of the conversation. But thank you very much for that excellent kickoff. 
Um, so we'll now go to the second speaker, uh, Maria Yatanu. Um, over to you for your opening remarks, please. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you all. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Minister of State, for those great insights. Um, I am uh, a researcher at a think tank that is in Germany, but I have been privileged to be able to live in Nigeria for the last five years, which has been okay. fantastic personally and also for my research uh, into Nigerian energy transformation. And um, I've um, thought some points uh, on the issue of, of green recovery um, from an international perspective and then would narrow down to what it means for Nigeria. Um, but first of all, I wanted to start by reminding ourselves that there is no economy versus environment conflict. Um, when we look at the, the mid and long term consequences of this, of this crisis and how we will overcome it, it's not helpful to now start on the very false dichotomy that this is an issue of jobs versus pollution or of exports versus climate. Um, I think we've got enough of all those uh, simplified uh, narratives and, and we, we should not fall into it. Um, we can, I can talk a little bit about green recovery programs that my institute has been looking into since the financial crisis um, which, because there is uh, already some experience. And um, after, in, 10 years ago, there were stimulus programs up to a trillion uh, dollars uh, in, in the major economies. And um, at the time, uh, there was not a huge, um, uh, there were large elements of green, of what was called green investments within those stimulus packages. Um, but there was different definitions and different um, amount of political will for it. Some countries like South Korea had an incredible foresight in this area and invested heavily on sustainable energy, on their um, transport infrastructure that would uh, reduce emissions and have seen the effects. And uh, it, some, their choices of putting a lot of their fiscal stimulus into green investments is credited with them having recovered uh, very quickly from the financial uh, uh, crisis and, and having had an impact on employment and GDP growth. Um, so because of this and other examples now, in this context of the current pandemic, green recovery is being discussed again very seriously. And um, just this week in the European Union, uh, there's a 500 billion euro recovery fund uh, up for discussion, still to be negotiated, but it is clear that the conditions for how these um, funds will be um, disbursed will be tied to the um, umbrella policy of the European Commission at the moment, which is the Green Deal. Um, I also wanted to point out there has been a famous, there's a pretty famous study right now on the, from Oxford University, which has evaluated <laughs> green investment. <laughs> and there has been, so I just, there was an echo, it's fine. Um, and I quote from this report, uh, it has taken a look at different um, uh, types of so, investments so with... Others, if you're not talking, if you can please go on mute. Okay, go ahead. Right. So, so for example, uh, particularly for clean energy infrastructure investments, it's... Um, it, it shows uh, through evidence how it's particularly labor intensive, creates twice as many jobs per dollar as fossil fuel investments. It also contrasts uh, with other uh, possible measures such as bailouts of uh, airlines and uh, car industry, which are currently on the table, and, and, and those um, fare worse in terms of their economic return uh, of, and, of course, in the environmental impacts. So, again, um, green investments are. Be, uh, show, uh, they're showing themselves to be economically effective uh, and can bring about this um, socially fair outcomes for current workers and future generations of workers. And, and that's internationally, but um, what about Nigeria? So in Nigeria, unfortunately, we don't need to look back 10 years for the latest economic crisis. Uh, in fact, we know that currently 
there might not be any significant amount of funds to uh, create a green recovery. There are loans that Nigeria uh, will be ha um, is being uh, offered, has accepted, and there are savings, and there are even um, uh, savings from removing of subsidies. So those are all recent developments in this crisis. But as we know, this is now currently the perfect storm for Nigeria. And uh, you will have seen the, the, the figures for, for, prediction, for, for contraction of GDP. And also now there are these um, World Bank figures estimating that an additional 5 million Nigerians would fall into extreme poverty this year. That's in addition to what was expected already. And, um, and that's bleak. Uh, I, I, just to add one more bleak detail, I do want to flag up that there is another issue, uh, which is Nigeria's preparedness for the next major crisis, which is the climate crisis, as the Honorable Minister of State has already alluded to. And the climate crisis for Nigeria means a health crisis, means food security crisis, and means also the security crisis in general. And this is not going away because of the current crisis, the current uh, pandemic. The climate is still warming. Um, despite the drop in the last two months, in the slight drop in reduction in emissions, uh, 2020 is headed to be the warmest year on record since be records began 150 years ago, globally. And, and this is a social, this is a, a crisis uh, that would not, we would not be able to lock ourselves down for. We are not having any kind of social distancing measure. The only vaccine for this is to st stop the reduction, the emissions, um, and also to invest in our preparedness to face those challenges. So in other words, for Nigeria, that would mean uh, preparing Nigeria's cities, its agriculture and its manufacturing sectors, and even its oil infrastructure to face the effects of climate change in the coming decade. And if I can just finish on a higher, on a brighter note, I wanted to make, I give a thought on how I see um, clean recovery for the power sector in Nigeria, because I, I see the Nigeria from the years I was um, um, involved in the research uh, about this um, about the this country. I I must say that there are a lot of progress that has been done, and to me the central focus of any economic recovery at the moment is to maintain this momentum and to not lose ground on the many dimensions that were uh, that are going on at the moment on grid off grid finance policy skills etc and i hope there will be a chance to discuss it and i very much look forward to to hearing what the other speakers and the audience have to say about it so with that i just wanted to um say thank you and i look forward to the discussion later all right thank you very much maria um so you you were i think 30 seconds over but but th that's okay for today um, Ahmad, uh, over to you, uh, MD of REA. Um, I'm not sure if you're on video yet, um, but even if you're only still on, on audio, that's fine. If you can now please go ahead with your opening remarks. Uh, thank you very much, Weba. Ah, there you are. Okay, good to see you. Yeah, I don't know if you Ina, know. Ina Hulanka. Hulana na ajisha, I get it. No, well, okay, okay, so, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks for that, Weba. I okay. can see you're going to be a very uh, accurate timekeeper today. Uh, so yes. I'll try to 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 uh, take it within the particular time uh, that was allocated. Uh, but before I go into that, uh, I think I just wanted to uh, pardon me to digress a little. Uh, the Honourable Minister, you know, I, I was very happy to hear uh, some of the things you are mentioning uh, with the uh, green bonds uh, at, the, at the Ministry of uh, Environment. I was privileged enough to be there just before you came in uh, with uh, Amina Mohammed, I don't know if you're aware where I worked with her for two years uh, and we were part of the design of uh, a lot of those uh, programs that you're currently working on. So I'm really, really happy that uh, those are making progress. Uh, and this is where I started getting the nexus between uh, the renewable energy and the climate change uh, uh, pandemic uh, that we're currently coming uh, going through at the moment. So this is where I began to learn uh, how renewable energy could make a really, really big impact. So 
the Ministry of Environment actually gave uh, me the foundation uh, to start this work uh, at the Rural Electrification Agency. So I just thought uh, to put it out there for you, Honorable Minister, uh, and to continue to commend you uh, for the good work that you're doing uh, at the Ministry at the moment. So just before uh, I go into, uh, into uh, other things, uh, just uh, in essence, the Rural Electrification Agency, uh, which I'm sure you're aware, uh, is the agency of government uh, that implements uh, the rural electrification for the underserved and unserved communities in Nigeria. Uh, at the moment, uh, as we rightly mentioned, you know, the electricity issues in Nigeria you know, uh, spans over 80 million Nigerians without uh, having access to power. Uh, this is why at the Rural Electrification Agency, we continue to encourage uh, private sector participation, which is what uh, uh, myself and my good friend, Mr. Weber, uh, often have synergy on where he is part of the private sector uh, while I'm in the public sector. And we ensure that, you know, we create that uh, opportunity for private sector investment. Uh, we are aware uh, that uh, public sector money is just not going to be enough. Uh, hence why we uh, open the space up for private sector to come in invest and sell this power uh, to nearby communities at a reasonable uh, tariff. So uh, to that effect, uh, we, we have a fund of about $550 million uh, from the World Bank and the Africa Development Bank, uh, which funds the Nigerian Electrification Program and other initiatives of the REA uh, for providing access uh, to these underserved and unserved rural communities. Uh, and, the, and the major activity that we look to stimulate by uh, bringing this sort of money uh, is agriculture. Uh, the power we are providing to them through the grid extension projects, mini grid projects, uh, standalone solar systems are providing currently uh, numerous uh, benefits. The electricity allows farmers to practice irrigation to increase food production and incomes, uh, the electricity and the productive appliances. Uh, just last week, uh, just sorry, two days ago, we had a, a webinar uh, on the productive use appliances where we had called on uh, various developers uh, and told them about the program uh, with the Africa Development Bank uh, to encourage uh, developers to come in and uh, key into that program where, you know, the productive use appliances could be uh, benefited uh, with uh, mini grids uh, communities that we currently have. So that program has actually uh, currently being rolled out and, uh, and, and we're working on, uh, on, on putting it on board for, for other uh, private sector firms to come in. So uh, that being said, you know, the, the, the benefits of, uh, of this electrification create uh, a growth of agricultural value chain, uh, farmer incomes, jobs, uh, uh, food security, and all other uh, contributors to uh, sustain economic growth and improve balance of payments. Uh, so, uh, with, with this, uh, with, with power, you know, what you realize is that uh, we, we try to look beyond uh, providing that power. We try to look at or uh, measure the impact of how that power has, um, has enhanced uh, economic growth, how that power has affected lives. So, for us, this is where we know that. Uh, taking this electricity to the rural areas uh, would encourage uh, them to, to, to have uh, these uh, occupations where their life, uh, it were increasing their livelihoods. So in, in essence, uh, we also uh, look at how this power uh, in this country now where, you know, security is also a problem. Uh, we have uh, the situations where having power and uh, especially through some of our programs uh, improve uh, lighting at night. Uh, we have a situation where, uh, for instance, in the energizing education uh, programs that we have, just bringing power to these campuses actually uh, enhances security uh, to ensure that uh, people uh, are being able to uh, go around at night. Uh, with the specific, uh, with, with COVID, you know, uh, what you find is that the healthcare system in Nigeria as well, you know, uh, power, of course, plays a very big role. Uh, especially with powering some of these uh, uh, molecular uh, equipment. So just recently, uh, and ourselves and uh, all on uh, the company that we, Weber runs, uh, we've tried to uh, bring power to the healthcare system. Uh, at the REA, we took power to about four isolation centers here in Nigeria. 
uh, one in Abuja, uh, another one in Lagos, and two in Ogun State. Uh, and what we found is that uh, the absence of clean, reliable energy uh, af affected you know, uh, how equipment are being run, uh, how vaccines are being stored. So this essentially uh, enabled uh, us to contribute a little to, uh, to what uh, the government is already doing on the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, situation. So I think I would, uh, I would stop here and I'm sure uh, Weber will ask more questions uh, later on that would continue to, uh, to stimulate the discussion. So uh, thank you very much and I'm very honored to be here today. All right, thank, thank, thank you, Ahmad. Uh, and, and again, I think the, the link um, with your background in the Ministry of Environment and on the Green Bond. So over to you. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what I was saying is I think your, your background with having been in the Ministry of Environment working on the Green Bond um, and then now in the, in the REA, I mean, as the, as the Honorable Minister said, I mean, that's kind of like the, the perfect combination of how we can, we can uh, drive the green, green, a more green, a cleaner economy, um, you know, with, with that kind of collaboration. So I think, I think you're the perfect person for this. Um, but look, let, let's go back to, um, to the Honorable Minister uh, to, to kind of unpack um, and, and, and sort of go further on some of the questions that, that, that we were going to raise. So you, you mentioned, Honorable Minister, in your remarks that from your view, um, you know, power is obviously a big driver of emissions in Nigeria, primarily because so much of our power is through, you know, diesel and petrol generators that are not at economies of scale. It's house by house, building by building, that kind of thing. Um, however, I guess I would question that. And I just want to say maybe you could go a little further. Um, wouldn't you say that with the, you know, with, with most people working from home for so long now, um, office buildings aren't aren't using power, um, you know. So so overall, there would be a, a a lot less kind of diesel and petrol generated power being 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 supplied right now. I mean, I I would I would imagine that would actually mean that the emissions have gone down significantly. But it'd be interesting to hear what your view is on this. Has the lockdown and all of this this sort of slowdown had a major impact on emissions, or or is is it is it not that different? Honorable Minister, I, you might be on mute. We can't hear you if you're talking. Uh -huh. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Oh, there we are. Okay, good. And now uh -huh. you're on video, so we can see you. All right, good. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So okay, go I ahead. I was saying, yes, due to the power rationing and mm -hmm. power shortage in Nigeria, people are still running their generators at home. Mm -hmm. Because if we had uh, enough uh, clean, uh, renewable energy, at homes, it will still en it will enhance the COVID uh, nineteen uh, social distancing. People will stay home because mm -hmm. they have energy. Mm -hmm. But those who are home now, everyone is running their generator. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so in your estimation then, because we're now running the generators twenty four seven at People home, people are still running generators. Down. Yes, essential yeah. services are still going on. Yeah. Yeah. So even if there's any uh, reduction, like I said, it's not sustainable because once the right. lockdown is over, we go. Do we go back to business as usual? Right, 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 right. So it's it's, mm. and I guess overall the Nigerian economy, it, it in terms of the population, the overall emissions per capita is actually quite low anyway. Yes, it's quite it's low, but that doesn't mean we should increase it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Then also, so, uh, yes, yes, let me even add something else, yes. which is an outcome from what Sally Joe was talking about. I'm sure if he hears mm -hmm. this, he'll be happy. I mean, we had the Federal Executive Council meeting. And, you know, we have a Presidential Economic Sustainable uh, Committee. Mm -hmm. And the, the Minister of Finance presented a memo which was approved. And in the Economic Sustainability Plan, it proposes a range of... Uh, interventions for post-COVID uh, recovery. Okay. Yes. And also to spawn uh, local production and job creation. And uh, five of the key aspects in it that I picked out were one was a mass uh, agricultural production. Okay. Was one. Number two was a major uh, rural uh, road construction program in Nigeria. 
Then we have uh, a mass housing program. Then the fourth one that Sally Jo will be very happy about is a large scale installation of residential solar systems. Okay. With the caveat that we will utilize uh, mainly uh, local materials. Okay. Then also we have the expansion right. of the federal government's uh, social investment uh, program. So all these interventions must tie in with green recovery oh. mm -hmm. for us to access uh, climate uh, finance. And uh, Maria talked about uh, what Korea had done and the climate financing. We are gearing that way. We were part of the UK Africa Investment Summit and I had a bilateral with uh, the Secretary of State for Business Development in the UK, Andrea Letson. And the outcome of that was a climate finance advisor for Nigeria, for Nigeria to be able to access green financing. Because as Maria is aware, Nigeria hasn't quite been accessing mm -hmm. as much as we should for green projects. So the Ministry of Finance is pushing to make sure we integrate green projects in everything we do. So these five areas mm -hmm. I had uh, 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 pointed out to you, we're going to integrate it with climate change because COVID recovery is intertwined with climate change. We can't do one without the other. And we're realizing right. that as a government. Right, so that, that's, I mean, that's, that's really interesting to hear because and, and it's something yes. where you know, th this crisis is sort of what brought this out. I mean, I imagine some mm. of those projects and the focus on green would not yeah. have even come to the conversation if we weren't in the situation we are now. Precisely. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's changing, it's changing the kind of the mindset as well, which is... Which yes, is it's changing good. the thinking, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, just a quick reminder, if you have questions, you can either send the question or raise your hand. Um, but we're going we're gonna to take questions and go through your questions from the audience um, once, once we're done with this moderated session. So in about 20 minutes or so, um, we'll start taking questions from the audience. Um, so just keep those in mind. You can, you can be sending them now and Ogbana is sending them to me also so that I can, I can uh, sh share them later with the panelists. Um, so, so Ahmad, um, you, know, you, you talked about uh, powering healthcare centers and all that. Um, and, and, and the statistic that I heard from, from your predecessor a few days ago um, was that only in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, only 28% of health facilities have reliable power, which is, which is pretty shocking, right? Especially when we're in a pandemic and we're in this situation where more than any other time we need health to operate. And if health doesn't have power, it can't operate. But it's the same as so many other sectors. As the honorable minister said, people are now working from home, but they're now running their generators 24 seven. So we're still you know, burning fuel, increasing emissions and all that. But we're also seeing, at least from our investees that, um, people are now calling them and saying, look, in this kind of time, this is when we need solar, because then we don't have to worry about, okay, what if diesel can't be delivered? I still have power. Um, so do you think that this pandemic actually provides an opportunity to increase clean energy in Nigeria, that people you know, at a household level, at a business level, will have an easier time making that decision than they did before? What, what's your view on that? Uh, sorry, Weber, I think I, I lost you for the last sentence. Could you repeat the okay. last sentence? Yeah, so what I was saying is, you know, if you look at healthcare facilities, if you look at households, uh, more and more of them are now looking to solar as a solution in this time because, because of, you know, needing business continuity and so on. Um, so do you think that this crisis could actually lead to a takeoff of, of renewable energy, solar energy, et cetera, um, across Nigeria? Uh, no, I, I, I think I, I, I must agree with you that uh, the trend has started to show that uh, within this crisis, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, uh, the healthcare facilities, uh, as they were on, on ground, you know, even as uh, we, we uh, went on some of those interventions, you find that uh, what you have there, even if uh, you have the generators, even if you have the grid, you know, what you find is that uh, they are not reliable enough, you know, especially if uh, some of the equipment we have, you know, we are required to have 24-hour uh, uh, power, you know, uh, reliable, clean power. So what you find is that uh, the trend is actually, uh, is certainly going to change. And uh, it's ironic, but uh, perhaps 
uh, the pandemic, you know, would uh, would encourage us to uh, to continue powering these healthcare facilities because uh, yeah. what you find, at least, um, you know, now that you are putting in this power in there, you know that uh, they are within hospitals, they are within treatment centers, and even post COVID, you know, uh, you have these facilities still there uh, being used by these uh, by these centers. You know, so for instance, you, some of the uh, systems that you've put in Weber, you know that even post COVID, those mm -hmm. systems would stand the, uh, the, uh, the, the length of time, especially if you're putting quality equipment like the lithium batteries. You know, so I think. In a way, uh, you know, it's ironic. The pandemic has actually uh, gotten us to to really, really uh, mm -hmm. think on our feet and then start uh, putting these things in place, uh, just so that even after the pandemic, you know, we have actually succeeded in uh, improving uh, uh, the healthcare facilities. So, of course, with the uh, with the residentials as well, you know. Um, uh, part of the programs we run uh, also include the solar home systems, and I'm very happy that uh, the Honourable Minister uh, mentioned this earlier. I think uh, this was a, a huge policy statement. You know, I don't yeah. think uh, the world knew about this, but I think the Honourable Minister, uh, I think I'm glad that I was here when the announcement oh. has been made uh, that this has actually been Was it breaking news? Was that breaking news? news. It's, not... it's actually oh. breaking news. <laughs> wow, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. So, so thank you for breaking it here, Honorable Minister. This is this is the right platform. No, no, the the Minister of Finance had made a statement. Sally, Dre, you are probably not following national news. After okay. each fact session, we have a briefing of okay. the media. She did make the okay. briefing. So did she did okay. make. I I, I had inside that it was already approved, so I didn't bother watching to see uh, if it was. Okay, actually now now I've told you the bits it contained in the approval. So you are okay. the major one. Yes. Wow. So okay. that, is, that is good to hear that. Uh, so, so we were, this, this actually uh, does prove what you're saying, that uh, the mm -hmm. government is looking towards that direction now uh, where, you know, solar is going to play a big role even uh, for the mm -hmm. residentials. And uh, moving on to the uh, solar home systems program that we currently have uh, with the World Bank, you know, uh, there's a platform there, you know, that has been allowing the private sector to come in uh, you know, uh, deploy this uh, this uh, equipment uh, with the residentials, and they've been able to uh, make payments. Uh, we've been uh, we've been able to give them a subsidy for for those programs. So uh, this essentially takes a very similar uh, way, but then, as the honourable minister said, you know, there's going to Ahmad, you've cut off. At least I can't hear you right now. Okay, can others hear Ahmad? I can't hear him right now. It seems like he's frozen. Uh, okay. I think you oh, must, th you there we go. For, for, a few, for a few moments there. Yes, yeah. So sorry, you, you cut off for a bit. If you can start, if you can, if you can say again what you were saying. Uh, this this certainly shows that um, that is the direction we're going, and then with the local manufacturing, you know, we're going mm -hmm. to further expand this market and bring in local players, bring in the manufacturers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to be able to uh, you know encourage the private sector to actually begin to produce uh, some of this equipment locally, which will really really help the market and go as far as uh, electrifying uh, five million or so uh, households. Mm -hmm. so I think mm -hmm. that's a good one. So uh, thank you for that, honorable. Right. Yeah. No. So that's fantastic that that this is this is coming through, and I think the local content part. Um, you know, there there are a few companies in Nigeria that are, uh, you know, assembling solar panels. There's Oxano. There's Blue Camel. Um, there's a company in Enugu called Green Edge Technologies that does inverters. Uh, but I think this then is an impetus to say, look, okay, not only do we need solar, but we also need to make this stuff here, uh, for our own, you know power security to some extent, but then also that further reduces the the environmental impact because you're not bringing everything in from China and, and all those additional uh, emissions that, that have to have to um, that go into all the transports. So I think this is this is a great example where, again, COVID is leading us to a clean, a cleaner future. Um, so so Maria, um, you, you talked about you gave Korea as an interesting example. Um, and, and, and you talked about, though, that, you know, this, this, there was all this talk about green recovery and all that in the, in the financial crisis and that other than Korea and a few other places, it doesn't seem like 
many countries really, really took advantage of that and really executed on it. So do you think that this is now the crisis that will force that to happen? I mean, we're seeing it as what the Honorable Minister said, what Ahmad said, um, we're seeing it here in Nigeria. Um, will we see this elsewhere in the world where this, this COVID crisis will actually force the hand uh, and, and make some of this green recovery just law and, and make it happen instead of just talk? Yes, it's already um, being intensively discussed. Um, it's a question more of whether we learned uh, what, uh, what we had to learn from the last time uh, and whether there is, um, how to say, enough funds to, going around right now to, in some of the economies to spend on these um, stimulus packages. But yeah, so well, um, one of some of the lessons that were learned uh, at the time were that um, um, there are different understandings of what green investments are. Mm -hmm. uh, there are there is it's very um, it, it was very difficult to monitor at the time what the uh, investments were, where where they were going, what were the impacts in terms of jobs, of GDP. I mean, how do you disaggregate what uh, percentage of your GDP growth has come from a certain investment or another, and 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 then of course the there was um, a political um, there was a, a less strong political uh, drive behind it. But I see um, we see now, for example, um, uh, a, a much stronger um, understanding uh, among the private sector in the European Union as um, a, a certain sectors, for example emission intensive industries such as steel or cement seeing um, that anyway they're going to have to decor decarbonize uh, in the midterm so they might as well be invo involved in the planning of how these uh, um, subsidies and, and, and incentives are going to be spent so that it 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 uh, it works exactly how they uh, find it should work and and a lot of the negotiations are being driven by uh, major um, private actors. Um, in the context of Nigeria, I uh, again would say it's um, a matter of uh, what uh, are the priorities for spending, um, which uh, I believe uh, shouldn't necessarily be to, to decarbonize. Of course, the, the, the per capita emissions of Nigeria are extremely low. Um, Nigeria contributes 1% of the global greenhouse gas emissions, but there should be a thought to putting Nigeria on the path to uh, low emission economic growth and also to not lose opportunities from the uh, energy transition that is currently happening globally and, and, and not stay behind to, from the digital, digital transition and and other major trends that sh where Nigeria should not be left behind um, and that have to do with also sustainability but with a host of other uh, economic goals too all right so thank you very much um, so I think you're 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 kind of piling on to what the honorable minister said about that even though our emissions are low we need to keep it that way um, but we still need to find a way to grow the economy. So, so but let's let's go back to the honourable minister now. And I mean, you already shared some of the details. I think from you know from from the highest levels of government um, on how the government is responding and how much a, a, a focus there is actually on a clean a cleaner uh, return, cleaner recovery. Um, but but what other measures are you are being put in place or are you recommending, um, honourable minister, that might be able to sustain some of these cleaner cleaner habits? I guess that you could say. And, and the term you used, I think you said the, the low emissions lifestyle um, that the lockdown has forced on us. Um, for example, even this meeting, you know, we're, we're, we're doing it online. We, nobody jumped on a plane to fly to Abuja. Nobody spent 30 minutes in traffic in Abuja to drive to the site. Um, we're all operating from wherever we are uh, in, in Nigeria and around the world. Um, you know, is it, w would the Ministry of Environment consider recommending to the government, look, all of these meetings that we're always traveling all over the place for, why don't we just Hold them on Zoom. We've shown we can do this. What 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 are the kinds of things that that in the ministry you you are recommending to government to say? Look, we've proven we can do this in a low carbon way. So let's let's continue this.
Honorable Minister, can you hear me? Okay, um, Ogbana, um, do you know if she's still on the call? Okay, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, Ahmad, are you still on the call? Sorry, um, Dr. Boa, she's, she's on the call, but I think she's muted. Uh, the Honorable Minister is muted. Okay. Yeah. All right. I see. So how do we how do we get her attention? She's still speaking, but I mean, I think admin can try oh. to. Okay. So okay, sorry. it's unmuted now. I found yeah. It. Sorry. I'm okay. Still using okay. my phone. Uh. Okay. All right. So if you can start over, because we didn't, we couldn't hear you. Okay, I was asking you to to uh, speak more on the last uh, part of your question. You were saying something about the ministry. Yes, I mean, so in addition to what FEC is doing, mm -hmm. the, the Federal Executive Council, mm -hmm. um, what other, you know, what, what might you be recommending from the ministry um, for, for the government, especially to demonstrate for the nation, what are other ways that we can actually come back cleaner? Um, you know, in that, you know, you, you don't actually need to travel as much as we might have before. We don't have to go all over the place for meetings. Um, what, what are the kinds of things the ministry might be, re might be recommending to the government to consider for a cleaner, cleaner post-COVID recovery? Okay, everyone is enjoying the, the digital uh, way of having meetings, like even the Federal Executive Council meeting is meetings we're mm -hmm. having, but we're very social people. So that'll be very, very hard to implement mm -hmm. in Nigeria, if I may say the truth. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be yes. a very hard right. recommendation for us to stay this right. way. We're still working on our policies for reduction of emissions, mm -hmm. especially car emissions and trucks. That's a, a regulatory agency mm -hmm. under the ministry. It's finalizing on that for us to start implementing. That's why it's key for us to start off the Interministerial Committee on Climate Change. So every line ministry understands the work of the environment, the issue of climate change uh, mm -hmm. actions, and the targets we have mm -hmm. then get the buy-in the political will is there but we need to get the buy-in of everyone and also mm -hmm. include the private sector you know we policy makers we can't really implement without having the private sector involved in all we do so we have mm -hmm. to have the private sector mm -hmm. involved mm -hmm. yeah so just i wanted to get it this is a bit off topic but you mm -hmm. mentioned you know, like cabinet meetings right now. So you're all joining from home, just yes, like we're this. Yes, we're all. Oh, you're doing cabinet. Yes, on we're Zoom? all. Yeah, we're doing cabinet. You know, online, except you have a council memo wow. to present. Then you go in to present it. But we all sit okay. in our various okay. offices with the, with okay. the president and presiding. It works. It's been working. It works perfectly. And it's. Wow. It works perfectly. Okay. And the governors, I think some of the meetings, the governors yes, the, joined, the right? Gov Do they the join governor, from their The governor's now? forum meeting as well was held with Mr. President online. And okay. it works as well. Wow. Okay. So I'm sure by the okay. time we don't might, we might not uh, need to issue any regulations. People might just get used right. to it as a new normal and maintain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, even if you think of that, every state governor coming to Abuja for a meeting, just the carbon from that is crazy, right? Pre so precisely. they can just stay in their office and, and, and the time and even the time. So that's, that's, yes. that's really interesting. Okay. Exactly. Okay, so, and, and you were mentioning about, you were mentioning about vehicle emissions as well. Is there anything, yeah. I mean, I know we have a power shortage already. Is there mm -hmm. any move um, yet for cleaner, cleaner transport as well, like electric transport, or are we too far away from that? No, we're not, we're not far away with that. I mean, Nesria has uh, started that uh, conversation, you know, on how we can uh, decrease long-term uh, emissions. Mm -hmm. We are trying to encourage companies as well. That's why I say private sector mm -hmm. is key, mm -hmm. you know, to invest in uh, green uh, energy. Then we're talking of a policy as well for, for the use of, uh, what do they call it, two-stroke uh, engines. Mm -hmm. you know that are heavy polluters you know and encouraging nigerian uh, transporters to use uh, the four stroke uh, engine cars which are much more uh, efficient you know then also okay. 
NOSDRA is regulated, is trying to regulate, its implementation is the key, we have the policies, is trying to regulate the importation of vehicles into Nigeria mm -hmm. that don't meet uh, a certain standard like that Euro 3 uh, standards mm -hmm. as well. Okay. So, so this is all ongoing and, and it, it's not related to COVID. It, this isn't helping to accelerate it in any way. It, it's all ongoing, but COVID is now making us realize the importance of uh, climate actions. Mm -hmm. Because you know that COVID is intertwined with the environment. Right. So researchers right. have right. said it's zootonic. Yeah. So while yeah. we're focusing on clean energy, we, has, we also have to focus on... Uh, preservation of our biodiversity, conservation measures have to be put in place in Nigeria as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so th thank you very much for that. So um, Ahmad, let's, let's go back to you now. Um, in, in what ways can access to clean energy accelerate the recovery and growth of the Nigerian economy uh, from, from the, the crisis that it's currently going through? Yeah, thank you very much uh, uh, for that, Weaver. Uh, I mean, uh, all we do uh, at the Rural Electrification Agency, we all understand uh, the importance of, uh, of, uh, of electricity uh, in, in the country. You know, uh, it's Sorry, Ahmad, you froze a bit. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, I said it's, uh, it's perhaps a common sense that electricity is an essential component of our nation's mm -hmm. development process uh, and is the lifeblood of many economic activities uh, uh, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I mean, just to quote some stats, uh, according to the World Bank, uh, World Bank's Africa Infrastructure Country Diagnos uh, Diagnostic Report, African countries are losing uh, an average of 1% of its uh, GDP per annum due to uh, poor power infrastructure. Uh, and that Nigeria's estimated GTB loss from 1999 uh, to 2015 uh, due to uh, underinvestment in power infrastructure is 71 trillion. Uh, mm -hmm. Furthermore, analysis show that uh, power sector will require funding of up to $1.5 billion uh, annually going forward, uh, which will enable the diversification of economy and is estimated to drive growth by at least uh, 29.3 billion annually. So that being said, you know, uh, with some of the programs we are running uh, at, the, at the REA, uh, I spoke about, um, you know, the $550 million uh, project that we have with the World Bank and the Africa Development Bank. The idea of that is that that amount of money is supposed to uh, stimulate up to uh, $2 billion investment in, in the, in the uh, off-grid sector. Uh, with that and what the Honorable Minister just mentioned with the Economic uh, Sustainability Plan, uh, you find that, that it's very, very critical uh, that uh, putting these programs together would definitely uh, continue to stimulate uh, economic activities uh, in the country. So everything that we're doing, you know, uh, from the solar home systems, uh, from the solar mini grids, uh, from the grid extension projects, you know, it's all uh, geared towards one thing, uh, providing electricity, uh, and encouraging uh, people uh, to use that electricity uh, to, uh, to, to, to stimulate their, uh, their, their, their livelihood and to improve their, their well-being in, in the rural areas. So I think the, uh, the two topics uh, are completely intertwined. You know, you mm -hmm. can't even talk about uh, the, the economy without talking about power because uh, today everything that you do, uh, uh, I mean, power is the, is the essential uh, uh, part of it. You know, you really literally cannot do without power. I mean, uh, even in our homes today, we're not, uh, you know, generators are not enough now. We all have inverters, we have batteries. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sometimes I begin to think, uh, our kids grow up thinking, you know, if you have uh, some of these things, it's, uh, it's something that is taken for granted, but uh, there, are, there are people out there that uh, do not have access to these uh, to this kind of um, uh, equipment, you know. So, uh, I mean, with the solar home systems, for instance, you know, you can imagine, you know, having uh, somebody that has uh, his solar panel, you know, uh, he's able to charge his phone, uh, he's able to uh, hear what is happening on the radio, 
that alone on its own is, uh, would, 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 would impact him and would be able to uh, have knowledge of what is happening in the world. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, with the um, productive use appliances, you know, we are encouraging that program and, and we, I think, uh, you, we, we need to continue to encourage these uh, our mini grid developers to really key into the productive use uh, appliances uh, of the Africa Development Bank, uh, because I think certainly that would uh, uh, be able to uh, grow the economy. Yeah. So, so listen, we, we have a lot of questions coming in, and a lot of them are actually right so on this topic. Do. And so we have a lot of questions coming in, and some of them are right on this topic. So even though I said I wouldn't take questions until later from the audience, I'll, I'll just ask you them now. So basically, what one question was, we know that climate change has always been an issue. Why is it now? Um, is there kind of a higher impetus now for green energy? Um, and then the second one is, you know, yes, all of these, all of these solar solutions and so on are fantastic, but they're also expensive. Um, so, so how can the REA and maybe the whole industry help bring the prices down um, so that the average household could actually afford some of these, some of these uh, solar installations? So could you could you add, answer that as well? Those are from the audience. Okay, thank you, Iba. And I think uh, uh, with, 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 with having uh, this local uh, local production and manufacturing, you know, uh, and uh, you would also know uh, there's a there's a government uh, parastatal called Naseni uh, who also mm -hmm. do uh, local manufacturing in, in Nigeria. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, they are also growing, growing the market. So I, I think with, with what you've just asked, you know, just by share uh, economies of scale and bringing uh, some of this equipment in, what you find is that once the government uh, is, bring, is opening up the market, you know, you would find that these things would naturally uh, become cheaper because of the, uh, the share volume that we have uh, mm -hmm. within, the, within the Nigerian system. So, and also if, uh, you know, the private sector takes ownership of it, you know, with the competition you have, with the improvement of technology that you have, you know, you find that the prices uh, would eventually uh, uh, come down. And, and I think you've even seen the trend now, you know, uh, some of these uh, equipment that we have now uh, compared to five years ago are a lot cheaper. Uh, they've been improved by technology. So I think mm -hmm. uh, just if the government continues to drive policy towards green energy, it that will naturally bring down, uh, bring down the prices. Right, yeah, and then I think also with the, the large program that the Honorable Minister mentioned, uh, um, just those sorts of economies of scale um, yes. overall helps, helps, bring, helps bring the cost down. Um, so so let's, let's move to Maria. Um, Maria, so you, 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 did, you did refer to this, uh, but I, I just wanted to kind of get a few comments more on this. So given the need to quickly resume economic activity past post-COVID, post, post the, the pandemic, crisis. How logical is it to be concerned now about its environmental impact? I mean, we're talking about a cleaner recovery. Um, does that matter as much as just a recovery? Should we be concerned about the clean part? Maria? Yes. Yeah. So okay. as you will have um, gathered by now, I don't see uh, sustainability issues as a, as a secondary um, uh, concern because at the end of the day, we are talking health, we are talking food security, we are talking employment. And if, for example, we take the issue of the diesel generators, which were mentioned now, um, there are just as many um, deaths per year from inhaling um, toxic fumes from, from diesel generator use and carbon monoxide than there will be uh, of uh, this pandemic uh, in this year in Nigeria. There are long-term health impacts from the generator use in, in terms of uh, health and respiratory diseases and of um, increased risk of lung cancer. There are hearing impairments. There is, um, that's just on the health aspects. Yeah? So I see, um, uh, so-called uh, sustainability aspects uh, to they encompass all sorts of um, considerations about our well-being and um, from the perspective of uh, how it uh, intertwines with the economics the, the, the money in, in people's pockets again diesel generators is a perfect example 
it's the uh, it's the expenditure the 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 expenditure on, on, on fuel is, as we know, one of the major um, uh, costs in, in, of, of small and micro enterprise and of large uh, businesses in Nigeria. So again, energy considerations and switching to um, replacing uh, backup generation with, with uh, lower emission and more um, affordable electricity sources is a, um, not just an environmental measure. It also happens to contribute to uh, global emission reduction goals. So I see that we should think uh, in terms of the synergies between the two. I don't know if that answers okay. a little bit. Nope, that does very much so. Um, so so let's, um, let's, let's go back to the honorable minister. Um, so as, as you, you said at the beginning in your comments, um, you were expecting a lot of questions and comments about gas flaring, and that is indeed the case. I think about half the questions that are coming in um, have to do with gas flaring. Um, and, and obviously that's a huge part of the sort of cleaner, uh, cl cleaner recovery is, is to, to, to shut that off. Um, so honorable minister, what, I, what the, uh, the listeners would love to hear, you know, you said that there's progress there. What, what, where are we on that? Um, how, how many years are we now away from it being completely eradicated? Um, and, 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 and how can, um, you know, what, what are the things private sector maybe could also do to help with that? Um, so Honorable Minister, if you could address that, please. Okay, I cannot say categorically how many years we have to end it or when it, exactly when it will end. That will be the Minister of Power mm -hmm. that will answer that. As I had said earlier in my opening, the Interministerial Committee on Climate Change is positioned to tackle this now and make sure that the Minister of uh, uh, Power and uh, 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 Petroleum Resources mm -hmm. and the key oil players understand the importance and the gain for us to stop uh, gas flaring. Just like Maria said, it affects the lives of people, the health issues and the health challenges of it. Besides the gas flaring, we have the air pollution issue in Port Harcourt, and this is coming from oil production, but this oil production is illegal refining. So our basket mm -hmm. is full of what we have to tackle. So that interministerial mm -hmm. committee, when all the line ministries come together, will, ab mm -hmm. will be able to move forward with it. But categorically, I, as the Minister of State for Environment, cannot give you a categorical statement on that, except the Ministry of uh, Petroleum Resources and Power. But, it, and this inter interministerial com committee, is this relatively new? No, it's been in existence, okay. but it hasn't quite kicked in under this new, uh, this second term of Mr. President. Since okay. uh, we came in, since I came in with the other minister in uh, October of last year, Mm -hmm. It hasn't met, but now with the climate crisis mm -hmm. and the COVID-19 issues and the vulnerability of our people, it's now. Yeah. There's no better time yeah. for us to get on it and implement and enforce what we have yes. to enforce for the livelihood Absolutely. of our people. Absolutely. And, and there's another question here that actually now is the link between gas flaring and rural power. Um, so may, maybe you can talk to this a bit and then Ahmad will talk to this. Um, is, is one solution here that then the gas that's flared is instead used for, for power production, you know, almost like gas powered mini grids? Is that, is that a, a, a possible solution for this? It could be, but I think Ahmad is more of the expert that can speak better to, to that. Okay. Ahmad? Because I know, yes, okay. because LNG, we are, we are considering mm -hmm. the option of LNG for clean cooking for our rural okay. women. Yes, clean okay. cooking so stoves for our rural good. women. Okay, yes, which is also and there are some pilot the projects. Yes, there are some pilot projects that have taken off on that, but it's for us to upscale that. Okay, okay, so that's yeah. one use. I mean, so Ahmed, <laughs> Ahmad, I mean, can can gas flaring then be used? Can the gas there be used for then rural electrification as well? Is that a is that something that REA is also looking at? Uh, well, currently, um, I wouldn't say we have started uh, looking at it uh, per se, uh, because uh, as you can imagine. Uh, even the solar, the solar market, the renewable energy market uh, is just evolving now, you know, so uh, with the technologies that we have now, 
uh, what you find is that they are just coming into the market now. People are just getting used to them. So with the uh, uh, changing of uh, or converting gas to electricity, you know, uh, is something that we we were carrying out uh, researches on, and we are, we often get proposals on it. Uh, we have a department of uh, of research and statistics that. Uh, we tend to look at these uh, sort of proposals, but to be honest, uh, we haven't made any definitive move uh, to mm -hmm. start doing that at the moment. Okay, okay, all right. But I, I think it's something that maybe it's an opportunity again for Environment and REA to come together and, and look at this. Um, yeah, definitely, but, it's something we can look into. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. something okay. we can look into with REA. All right, so, so everyone on this dialogue, we've had you know um, breaking news on, on things for the solar industry, we have a, a agreement to work between the ministry and, and REA. So, so a, lot, a lot of good is coming out of this. Um, but I understand that the Honorable Minister now needs to leave. I think she has another meeting now. Um, so, so how many minutes do we have with you? I mean, could, you, could I ask you one more question? Or, okay, or you, uh, okay. you may ask one more question. What's the time? 10 after no, 6. Okay, yeah. you're, you're, ask one more really, you're really enjoying this view, but you need to, be, you need to come back on no, this I'm, side. I'm, I'm really enjoying the new normal. <laughs> no, no, no. This, yeah, yeah. But I, I like this. You know, you don't you don't often get this much time with a minister. So, so I'm 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 taking every advantage we can. Um, but yes. but listen. So so the question is this. Um, you know, if we're looking at, obviously at a cleaner cleaner recovery, we need renewable energy. We need solar. We need all that. Um, but is the ministry yet looking at you know from a longer term? You know, let's say five years, seven years, when when the you know the the, the lead acid batteries need to be recycled, when eventually lithium batteries need to be recycled the panels, all the other e-waste involved in solar power. Um, it's not a problem yet because the industry is new, um, but we need to look at the future and we need to make sure that, you know, while trying to create a cleaner future, we don't then create a whole other problem. And, and so is the Ministry of Environment looking at that at all yet? Oh, definitely, we're, we're looking into that. I mean, the Ministry of okay. Environment, we have three regulatory agencies. We have the Nigerian uh, Biosafety Management Agency. Okay. which has to do with biosecurity. Then okay. we have the Environmental Regulatory Agency, NESRIA. Okay. They already okay. have a policy and a regulation to manage uh, lead batteries and electronic uh, waste. Okay. And we're also working closely with some uh, uh, private uh, companies that are into recycling okay. of such waste. It's something we are looking at. And we okay. know it's going to increase even post COVID. We're going to have a lot of uh, medical waste. Correct. Nigeria Correct. is already issuing out the regulations and the guidelines okay. on how to manage uh, medical waste from isolation centers. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is all. This is all in process. But again, I think that the one on the e-waste from from solar, we should really again, it's an opportunity for all of us to work together and yeah, and, in the and future. Come up with yes, a, definitely, we can, we can work yeah. on that. Because even yeah. the e-waste itself drives another whole circular economy, right? So it's it's not just pre waste. Pre it, it, preci yeah. preci precisely, yeah. Yeah. precisely. Yeah. Circular economy so, is another yeah. area that yeah. uh, the ministry is looking at in creation of okay. uh, jobs as well. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I think that so the, the number thank, one. Thank you all very much. We have to have this conversation yes. again. Yes. And I think my biggest takeaway, actually, from this is that we need uh, us in power. We need to do a lot more. And, com and have a lot more uh, uh, com uh, dialogue with environment. Um, there's so many with environment, overlaps. exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. environment so, so encompasses everything. The air you breathe, yeah. the land you yeah. stand on, the water yeah. you drink, everything is yeah. environment. So all we right. should all love the earth and do more for people and planet. Amen, thank you very amen. Much. And, and we're here to collaborate, so that's fantastic. So thank you again for joining. Thank you. Um, we took a, a lot you. of your time and we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So Ahmad, um, maybe let's um, now let's jump jump back to you. Um, so on that issue of e-waste, um, you know, w while I guess it eventually the, uh, the regulation will have to come from um, environment, um, yeah. is that is that something that REA is looking at yet? And, and I, uh, how far are we like? Uh, is it a year or two, three years away before it becomes a problem, or is it something that's really far down the road? No, no. I to be honest, I know, uh, I know there has been uh, a lot of effort uh, from the private sector uh, mm -hmm. to come up with battery recycling plans. Uh, but mm -hmm. of course, as you would imagine, I know uh, the costs are very, very high. Uh, mm -hmm. I can understand that uh, the, the Bank of Industry as well uh, have, uh, you know, are supporting those kind of uh, initiatives. 
Uh, but certainly this is going to be uh, an issue because with the market growing, uh, what you find is that uh, you know, the batteries obviously are going to be disposed. So if we don't think about it uh, seriously and put, put out uh, a, a deliberate policy uh, to be able to curve it early, you know, what you find is that it can become a problem in the future mm -hmm. because um, eventually these are, you know, some of the materials that end up uh, within our waters, uh, the, water, mm -hmm. the rivers, the lakes, uh, etc. So it's going to do a lot of damage to the environment. But I know we've been having some discussions with the Standard Organization of Nigeria. Uh, and in parallel, even uh, some discussions have actually started taking place uh, with the Ministry of Environment. Uh, but uh, at the moment, you know, I can't give you uh, a definite timeline, but uh, there, there, there has been some discussions now, yes. Okay, all right, good. And um, and again, it's something that I think as an industry, we all need to, to come together and, and, no, and play a role in. Because yeah. it could yeah. become, it's not a problem uh, immediately now, but it could mm -hmm. become a serious issue later in the future. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's go back to Maria. So Maria, you 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 talked about um, I think sort of the broader global picture, um, and, and and you gave us an insight in South Korea and how they you know using a, a cleaner um, economic approach they 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 weathered storms better and so on. Um, wh what are some other countries that Nigeria could look to, um, you know, as as the Federal Executive Council, as you know, REA and others are looking for a cleaner. Um, development path. What, what other countries are good examples for that and what have they done? So I'm afraid um, the parallels would need to be looked into um, oil rich mm -hmm. countries or all yeah. very yeah. Um, um, non, non very diverse export economies and uh, and in, in, in those cases I'm not such an expert of oil governance uh, mm -hmm. aspects but there are, there's experience I've had uh, on countries that are heavily dependent on coal, for example, okay. and their whole economy revolved around coal and they've had different uh, experiences in um, moving away. In some cases, it has been a shock, a horrible mm -hmm. uh, economic crisis. In other cases, there has been a, um, a well, um, uh, managed approach with enough uh, political will, enough engagement of the different uh, parts uh, involved, and um, and a good approach to um, to restoring um, jobs and um, and sources of income to those affected. Um, I don't know if Nigeria is facing its uh, final. Um, act in in terms of the of its oil industry but there is um i think uh lessons to be learned from from these transitions in other countries and perhaps uh a lot of uh thinking of what to do currently with the lack of uh, uh, income coming in from from the from the oil sector um uh, and how to spend the the the, the the, the little resources that Nigeria will have uh, uh, in the next uh, in in the in the midterm. So yeah, um, I think you you could look at other countries that had to to transition away from from certain resources mm -hmm. and and uh, learn lessons uh, of their of what has worked. Okay, all right. And then what about countries with? Um who have done a lot to kind of bring in clean, clean, uh, renewable energy. Um, I mean, Nigeria has an energy gap of a hundred million people. I don't think there's any other country other than India that has even close to that. Um, how can something like that be done in a rapid way? Um, so that again, you know, we grow the economy, but we don't keep adding generators to it. For me, um, from the, I, I believe the, 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 Companies like yours and uh, and sorry, impact investment impact investors like you would um, have looked at this already. But I think um, if we consider comparable contexts, we need to look at East Africa and um, how there. I think from the from the very top, there's been a drive for deploying uh, small scale solutions that may not look like the conventional. Um, uh, super uh, advanced industrialized um, solution to the electricity sector, but it actually bring enormous 
social benefits, uh, allow productive uses, um, bring about, yeah, uh, all sorts of opportunities to, to those um, using them and save them all the money that is being spent on alternatives, which in the case of Nigeria is very heavily, it, it's, uh, it's diesel generators, definitely. Um, and in, in, in those, yeah, in those contexts, you can look at um, I, what might be uh, needed uh, right now in Nigeria. I, I always think that actually a lot of uh, the things that are being done in Nigeria are the right steps. I, if anything, I'd see more need to have more discussion, more uh, uh, resources to um, decentralize solutions because they, they, I don't think they get to balance, um, they don't get the, the, the same degree of attention as the grid-based uh, part of the power sector. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I'll, we'll pivot back to Ahmad because I think, I, I, from our perspective, I think uh, off-grid is now getting a lot more attention. I mean, if you look at the last two years compared to what it was two years ago to now, um, and, and I mean, now there's a threat by uh, TCN employees of, of uh, that they're going to go on strike, which means there will be no grid and the entire power will be generated by off grid solutions. Um, so so that means basically Ahmad will be running the, the power sector for a little while. Um, but but listen, um, from from there's a number of questions uh, for you, Ahmad, from on, on uh, one is about, um, you know, with, with all the the uh, solar solutions being put in at universities and and all these installations all over the country, are the energy emission reductions uh, from that being reported um, so that Nigeria gets credit for that? Is that, is that being uh, monitored and reported? I, I think I know who that question is actually from. The, <laughs> the former colleague of mine probably at the Ministry of Environment. Okay, um, they're, they're trying to put you on the spot, I guess. Okay. <laughs> as, uh, as the Honorable Minister rightly mentioned, uh, there exists the uh, Interministerial uh, Committee on, uh, on the Climate Change, uh, where you have one representative of, uh, of, the, of every one of these ministries, so uh, mm -hmm. power, agriculture, water resources. Uh, and it's interesting, we actually use that same uh, platform to identify uh, some of the projects during the Green Bond uh, process. Uh, so we have uh, we have an understanding uh, with the uh, climate change department. Uh, so uh, I know we have had a couple of meetings. You know, uh, we've been given uh, some frameworks uh, that we filled in uh, and we submitted to uh, to the uh, to the climate change department. Uh, but I don't think that is happening uh, uh, organically. You know, it has happened a couple of times. So we need to mm -hmm. pick up that process and uh, and own it a bit more. Uh, but I guess with uh, with some of the halts in our in our operations now uh, that were not working fully, you know, uh, maybe that has uh, impeded it a little. But uh, I'll take note of that uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and be able to uh, run with it a bit uh, more organically. Okay. So apparently we now have someone. Oh, go ahead. Do you have a, a response? Can I speak also? to that? I think yes, the, the Honourable yeah. Minister earlier mentioned the importance of accessing climate finance. So this issue of recording emission reduction from projects is, is essential and, and there are champions in Nigeria that, are, that know how to do it and not all in the electricity sector, there's also in, in cooking sector and, and this is a, an, a, an enormous uh, resource to tap but it does take um, strategic and a strategic approach from, from the government. Just to well, add to that, I think, okay. from yeah, the perspective of climate finance. Yeah, thanks for that, Maria. I, I, and I think certainly with the, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in the day-to-day -day projects that we do, uh, you know, with the NEP, uh, perhaps that data hasn't come back to the Ministry of Environment yet. But I'm extremely, uh, I'm, I'm almost 100% certain uh, with the Green Bonds uh, and the Energizing Education Program, you know, that data has been... Uh, uh, relate back to the ministry because uh, part of uh, the design uh, of the program uh, did have to, uh, you know, the, the project had to uh, come up with those emission reductions, you know, uh, uh, urban issue, and they now measured it after after the uh, some of the projects have been delivered. So I think moving forward, we'll, we'll make an effort to uh, to to continue down uh, that trajectory. All right, thank you. So we, we now have someone in the audience who, uh, who wants to ask a question, not just type it. 
Um, so I'm not sure what we need to do, but can Ogbana, can you bring that person on? Yes, sure. They're going to, um, okay. Yusuf is going to bring him on right now. Okay. There are a number of them. I hear there are about three of them. So, okay. Okay. Try, yeah. a few minutes. All right. They'll have to be quick though. We don't have a lot of time left. Yes. Hello, okay. So you when you ask, when you ask the question, please tell us your name, uh, where you work, and then make sure it's a question and not a comment. Okay, go ahead. Hi, good evening, uh, Weber. My name is Caleb Adebayo. I'm a lawyer with Templars, the energy team of Templars. Um, okay. So my, my question is this. Is the REA, this is for Ahmad. Uh, I had a couple of questions for the Honorable Minister, but she's off now. So um, um, Ahmad, hi. Um, is the REA pushing for more incentives for renewable energy? For instance, um, I note that import of solar parts are still liable to custom duties and that um, the industry generally um, is liable to VAT. Um, recently, there was the release of a VAT modification um, order and natural gas was exempted um, from VAT. Um, and, and this is in response to what we're seeing now, the COVID um, period and and how um, the industry needs to respond to build um, the gas space. I think it also needs to respond to build the RE space. So is the okay. REA pushing for um, the RE space to also be exempted from the VAT and to get um, incentives like exemption of um, custom duties for um, importation of solar parts or in the alternative, um, enough funding for R&D for local production of these, these parts um, 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 indigenously? Thank you. All right, thank you for that. So very specific question. So maybe Ahmad, you can handle that right away. Yeah, thank you very much, Caleb. I think uh, this is an issue that uh, is currently uh, on the front burner. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a, a meeting with the uh, Renewable Energy Association of Nigeria. Uh, and this is something that was uh, mentioned. Uh, a few months ago, we also had correspondences from uh, one or two uh, government uh, officials asking us of, uh, the same question. So what you find with this, uh, with the import duty uh, is that, uh, because obviously it's not something that, uh, I mean, if I could wake up today and just, uh, you know, uh, be able to take it off, uh, it would have been easy, right? But then you need to uh, collaborate with the right government officials, with the right government agencies, uh, and make a case for, for, this, particular, uh, for this particular policy, policy intervention. So we are working currently with, 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 with our partners on this uh, to, to, to see how we can bring this through. Uh, so we've opened up those engagements and we have uh, made it very clear uh, that, um, you know, uh, you know, solar uh, solar companies, uh, renewable energy companies do need this incentive uh, to be able to continue to bring in uh, their investment uh, in this in this sector. So it's definitely something we're we are doing. Uh, we've engaged the Ministry of Finance uh, and, uh, and, and and the Customs as well uh, to be able to put this through. Well, as you know, uh, it's a policy issue, uh, so it, it you know it, it will take uh, it will take a bit of effort to. To, to, to go through, but then we are partnering with stakeholders uh, to be able to, to take this around. All right, thank you very much. So I think there's two more questions. Let's take them quick and then we're gonna have to round up. Okay, so um, Ogbana, can you open the line for the other person, the second person? Yeah, he's coming in now. Please okay. unmute your mic so you can speak, Mr. Aliyu. Abubakar. Okay. Please go ahead. We can hear you, Mr. Aliu. Okay. From uh, Aliu Haidra Boka from the Department of Environmental Management, Bayero University, Kano. Well, my question was also on, uh, on subsidizing the solar. But I think, what do you feel if you can give it as a loan to people so that they can have a payback time of maybe, say, five years and they pay instrumentally? I think that will go a long way in uh, solving the issue. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Very concise and to the point. Um, Ahmad, do you have any comment on that? Oh, I, I think he is, he, because the question he asked was very concise, but I, I think within the context of what he's saying, uh, he, I think he's talking about uh, a private sector um, being incentivized to go into the uh, the space of renewable energy, right? If I'm correct. Correct, yes. 
So, so Haider, you know, um, uh, thank you for that question. You know, so sometimes, you know, uh, there, there are various ways that you can, you can bring in that incentive. You know, it doesn't uh, necessarily have to be uh, a loan upfront, but you can have uh, performance-based grants, you know, as we do with the, uh, with the Nigerian Electrification Program. And we found out uh, that that also uh, works very, very well because as you can imagine, you know, um, the REA, you know, is also getting a grant uh, uh, from, the, from the World Bank, you know, to, to do that particular program. So in a way, you know, it's, uh, it's not an outright loan that you get with, with that particular one, but then uh, you only get paid, you know, based on the performance that, um, uh, that, that, that the private developer uh, brings into play. So for instance, you know, uh, we have a, an example in, in Niger State where a, a private sector company, uh, uh, PowerGen, you know, uh, have actually uh, gone ahead to put a mini grid uh, for a community called Rokota, uh, and they have currently now started uh, benefiting from this uh, from this grant uh, from the from the World Bank. So there are various uh, iterations of that. But with what the honourable minister just mentioned, uh, with the solar home systems, uh, you know, we do have uh, you know that CBN uh, loan coming through uh, hopefully very very soon, uh, where you can have that space. Uh, that uh, private sector will be able to access that uh, both for manufacturing and, and supply of solar home systems. All right, also, thank you sorry, very much. One more, one more, Weber, and there's also yes. the uh, Rural Electrification Fund uh, run okay. by uh, Dr. Stanusi Ohiari, uh, who, uh, I mean, also provides us with uh, some uh, subsidy and grants uh, within, within that particular space. Exactly. Okay. So one more question, please, and then we'll have to round up. So Obana, can you bring the last person in? Yes, please. Um, welcome, Anita Nana. Please, can you unmute so you can so we can hear you? Anita, go ahead, please. Anita, you're still muted. Your mic is still muted. You might want to unmute so that we can hear you. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what the problem is. Okay, okay. so I think- Yeah, let's just go ahead, please. Okay, all right, so we'll go ahead. Okay, so um, yeah, so I think, I think we've come to the, the end of our time um, and, and I appreciate the, the panelists. You know, this, is, this has been an hour and a half. Um, so I'll give them each a chance to, to give about a two-minute summary of, of, of their thoughts on, on what we've talked about today. Um, and then I'll close it out and then, and then, uh, and then we, can, we, can, we can end it. So um, I guess we, we should do ladies first. So Maria, um, can you give your uh, kind of two-minute summary um, of your thoughts from, from the, the, this dialogue today? Right. So um, just my final... Thing that I would have loved to discuss more, but I'll just leave it there as an, another discussion, is um, how are um, the entrepreneurs in Nigeria, or in, the, in the renewables and upgrade sector, um, really going to be supported? How, what are their needs uh, to be able to get to the other side of this crisis? And, I am, and this is a, a topic that I've, um, I've been uh, looking at, and I think it's another interesting issue. Um, that could be maybe picked up in another uh, power dialogue. Um, so just to sum up more on the topic of this dialogue, I just wanted to um, um, thank you very much um, to, to next year and to the Nigeria Electricity Hub for choosing this topic, um, because I think it's extremely important and we have learned uh, how things uh, are connected and how we should communicate uh, much more uh, between the energy um, sector and um, and the environment sector. Um, I'm already in that um, common space, but I, I realize that doesn't happen uh, as much uh, in in our conversations in the energy and in the environment sector. So my three closing thoughts are just: environment and economy are not in conflict, and to the contrary. Um, um, uh, sustainability pays off, but as I also wanted to, uh, in fact, reiterate that it's not just that it pays off, we also love the planet, as the Honorable Minister said. And um, 
the other thing I want to say is the climate crisis is not going away, and it's the it's a it's the next one. Um, and then I wanted to just reiterate the political moment to decide how to spend uh, recovery funds is right now, and we should not wait, and we should come up with um, well, uh, as has been announced today, this is already uh, being um, decided, but uh, there can be uh, still a lot of engagement with, uh, with the stakeholders to see what exactly is needed and how these recovery funds should be best spent in Nigeria. And with that, thank All you right. so much for the great thank you very much. Uh, dialogue. Thank you, Maria. So Ahmad, over to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Weba. And I think uh, I would just like to say I, I really enjoyed my time, uh, the last one and a half hours here today, uh, with the Honorable Minister Maria and yourself. Um, I think uh, it gave us very, very good insight onto what we can achieve uh, when, when, the, when we are under, you know, a lot of pressure. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I like to look at things positively. You know, uh, COVID has come. Uh, and uh, COVID has been able to put us in a very, very tough situation. But I think, you know, it has made us think outside the box. You know, as you rightly mentioned, Weber, something that is really interesting is that, um, you know, this new norm of having this video conferencing now is something that really, really intrigues me because even while uh, we were in on COVID, what I find is that I actually uh, achieve more now during the day because you tend to have much more meetings, mm -hmm. uh, much more relevant, uh, much more intuitive meetings uh, when, when, when things are being done uh, from a video conferencing perspective. So I think uh, uh, the longer short of it is that, uh, you know, um, yes, we're in a pandemic, uh, but we need to uh, lift ourselves up and continue to think outside the box, continue to bring solutions, uh, innovative solutions uh, that would be able to help both the power sector and the environment. And I think today with the Minister of Environment, the nexus was very, very clear, you know, on how mm. you know, uh, the environment is very, very critical to the sustainability of our projects. You know, um, mm. each project we do, of course, we go through having the uh, environmental impact assessment for, for each mm. of those. And then, you know, think about the uh, sustainability plan, you know, and how you ensure that if today, you know, um, you're, no, you're no more, uh, maybe the MD of REA or you're no more the Minister of Environment, how do these projects uh, last the test of time? You know, how do they, uh, you know, how, how are the institutions, uh, for instance, for the uh, energizing education, how, how have they taken ownership of these, uh, 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 of these equipment, of these, uh, uh, of these solar panels, of these uh, batteries, of these inverters to ensure that they are being run for the next 10, 15 years? So I think, um, you know, uh, in conclusion, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the dialogue has just really brought out, you know, what we can achieve uh, if we really put our minds to it. Absolutely. So, th so thank you for those, those closing remarks. Um, and I guess, you know, we're now, we're now ready to, to close this completely. And I want to just say a special thanks uh, to next year for organizing this, the, the 46th uh, dialogue, which again means that this has been going on for almost four years and, and continuously, which is a great achievement. Um, and I hope that, you know, in five years, we'll be doing the whatever, 130th dialogue together. Um, but, but I think this has been a great conversation. I think as, as both of you commented just now, um, this nexus between environment and power, um, even though you're from environment before, you, we, we, we haven't been doing this enough. Um, yes. And I almost, heard, I almost heard from the minister that it was like an invitation that come, we, we, we need to talk more. So I think we, we need to take her up on that. No, no, um, absolutely. Do that. Yeah, environment and that uh, was my former home, you know. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so so d don't forget them; they're, they're part of us now, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then and then Maria, thank you for bringing in ten, kind of the global insights. Um, and then I I think your your sort of focus on on the nexus of power and environment I think brought a, a great um, great addition to this. Uh, and so we thank you also. So 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 Ahmad, uh, I guess you probably need to break your fast now. Sorry to to, to keep yeah, you I over. I have one for you actually. Okay, okay, okay. I know. So, so sorry to keep you so long. Notice, and, for, yeah. and, and the advantage of the dialogue like this online is that others who needed to break their fast could do it while we were talking. Absolutely. Uh, but, but, but you are on camera, so, so we need to release you. So again, thank Ogbana you. and the team from next year, thank you very much. Um, thank this you. has been fantastic. And thanks for the great questions. Um, Ahmad, Maria, uh, great, great dialogue. And, and let's keep in touch.
Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everyone. Much. Thank you, Eva. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Boar. You. Thank you. Um, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Mr. Salijo. We appreciate the time you've taken to join us this evening. And this was really a, it was a wonderful session. I'm, I'm glad. And we learned a lot. And uh, the thank God for the breaking news we got here. We're, we're excited about that as well. Um, yes. Just a few announcements before we close. The next dialogue will be on the 24th of next month. It's yeah. also going to be another interesting um, discussion, and we'll send out invitations as usual. Um, for this dialogue, we'll send out the communiques and reports linked to this video, the full recording of this dialogue, so that anyone, people who have attended, who have registered, and who joined this meeting on Zoom will get um, the links and the invitation. Also, I need to apologize to Mr. Sani M. Lawal. He's been trying to, he's been raising his hands throughout this meeting for like a long time, but because of time, we couldn't get him in and, you know, we constrained him. So please send us your, your, um, your information, send us whatever contributions you need to make, and we'll publish them um, where we're releasing all the reports. Finally, those who would want a copy of the communicative um, discussions, please send an email to info at Nigeria com info at nigeria.com thank you very much again to the minister who, who has left already and to everyone else the panelists left here i really appreciate this i'm going to come back um, personally to say thank you to you have a wonderful evening thank you bye. all right thank you very much bye. thank you very much bye thank, thank you. you okay bye all right bye bye, bye.